Today we're going to talk about something called time.delta time, which is something you have probably seen a couple of times before inside many other tutorials or something because we use it quite frequently, at least inside the update method. Essentially time.delta time is the completion of seconds since the last frame inside your code as you're doing something. And it's something we use in order to make sure that no matter which computer you sit on, let's say I'm sitting on a potato of a computer that can only run a certain game with 20 frames per seconds, and let's say I have another computer that is running a game at 100 frames per second, then if I don't use time.delta time inside my update method inside my code, the one computer who has the slower frame rate is going to be running the game at a slower rate than the one that has a faster frame rate. So we want to make sure that we use time.delta time in order to make sure that the game functions the same when it comes to the speed of certain elements inside our game on all computers. So let's say I have an update method that looks like this inside my code and inside the update method I have a very simple if statement that simply says when I press the up key on my keyboard then I want to move my player a certain direction at a certain speed. Now we haven't talked about translate or rotate yet but essentially in the code that I have here we take the transform of the game object that the script is attached to and we simply move it a certain direction based on a vector 2 or vector 3. So in my example here I have a vector 2 because I'm using a 2D game as an example where I say that I want to move 5 in the upwards direction which means on the y-axis upwards. And with this example here, I'm going to demonstrate what exactly happens when we want to use time.delta time inside our code. But before we do that, let's actually go ahead and talk a bit about frames. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we have something called frames per second. And the frames per second is going to increase whether or not you have a potato PC or if you have a supercomputer sitting in front of you. And the better your PC is, the less time there's going to be between each frame because you can pump out more frames faster because you have a much better computer. Which also means that the update method inside our code is going to run a lot faster on a faster PC. So we need to get something called time.delta time and usually people they show you that you need to use time.delta time but it's always a good idea to know exactly what time.delta time actually does when it comes to using it. Essentially there is a formula for time.delta time. It is taking one and dividing it by a frame rate. And by taking this formula, we can actually go ahead and multiply our vector inside our code with this formula in order to get a fixed speed, no matter the frame rate. And to give you a couple examples of this, let's go ahead and talk about this next little example here. Let's say we have two PCs. We have one PC that runs at 20 frames per second, and we have another PC that runs at 100 frames per second. At the very top, you can see the default code that we had inside our update method. Whenever I press the up key, it is just going to be the transform.translate, and then we have the vector2 inside our translate. Now, if I were to do this on PC number one, essentially what it actually looks like when we do this and run the code over a duration of one second, it is going to multiply our vector with 20 because we're running this 20 times per second because that's our FPS inside our game. If I were to take PC number two, we would essentially be doing this at 100 frames per second, which means that we run the update method 100 times, which means that we need to take our vector two and multiply by 100. That is essentially what happens per second, which means that PC number one, which is not very good, is going to be running this game at 100 units per second Whereas the second PC is going to be running this at 500 units per second, which means that it's going to look something like this inside your Unity inspector when you actually run the code. Now we won't actually be able to see much difference between these two examples here because they're moving at incredible speeds. But trust me, PC number two is a lot faster than PC number one. And the way we can fix that is by adding in time delta time. So let's go ahead and say we have an example here where we take time dot delta time and multiply that with the vector inside our translate. So at the top here, you can see we have the same default line of code that is going to move my player. But this time I went ahead and multiplied by time dot delta time at the very end. This means that when we have PC number one that runs at 20 frames per second, essentially the time dot delta time is going to be one divided by 20, which is equal to 0.05, which means that the line of code now with the 20 frames per second multiplied into the uh, line of code is going to look like this, where we have 20 times the vector, which in our case is just going to be five on the y-axis, times 0.05. So instead of getting 100 units per second, we're instead going to be getting five units per second, which is going to look a lot slower inside Unity. 
And the same way we can take PC number two, which is 100 frames per second. So if we take the time the delta time formula, which is going to be one divided by 100, which is going to be equal to 0.01, then we can go ahead and put that inside our line of code, which means that essentially in one second, it is going to be 100 times the vector, which is five on the Y axis, times 0.01 which is going to give us five units per second. So by using time, the delta time, essentially what we can do is we can actually get a actual precise representation of how fast we want to move, no matter what the frame rate says inside our code. And with that said, whenever you do anything inside update that has to be fixed, no matter the frame rate, we want to be using time, the delta time in order to get that uh, same duration effect, no matter which computer we're sitting on. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.